Welcome to Crafty Beach. This is Julie and today I have loads of watermelon DIYs for you and we're also going to have a watermelon tear tray DIY later on in the video. But let's get started with our first watermelon DIY. I picked up this metal red pot at Dollar Tree the other day. Um, it's really a nice bright red and I thought we can make it look like a watermelon. So my plan is to make the top part like the rind um, or the outside of the watermelon and then all the bumpy part can be like the inside of the watermelon. Now since it had that rough texture I thought it would be kind of hard to paint seeds on there. So I went to my Cricut and I just typed in seeds and found this great seed pattern. I cut it out twice so I'd have plenty of seeds to use today. And this is just black vinyl that I get on Amazon. It should be linked in my shop below. And I thought that this would um, be an easier way to add seeds to the pot. And it is a permanent vinyl, so I think that it will be durable. Now I decided to kind of make all of my seeds face the same direction. I um, kind of chose like it's raining. So like the pointy tip of my seed is pointing up on all of my seeds but I am gonna alternate them like two up and kind of two down. And then I'm just gonna repeat that simple watermelon seed pattern all the way around our little pot. And it really was easy to use your Cricut for this cause you just have these little stickers you can just peel and stick. But if you had a solid um, pot or a pot that you had to paint red, um, you know, you might be able to paint some seeds on there as well but this is how I'm putting mine on there. Now I'm going to use this pot indoors, but if I were to use it outdoors, I might have sealed the whole pot with some Mod Podge to make it a little bit more durable to be outside in this Florida weather. But that's what it looks like so far with all of our seeds. Now for that top band of the pot, I want that to look like the outside of a watermelon. And so I want it to be green, but I knew that painting green over red was not going to be it. So I am doing a white background first, so just white acrylic, and I didn't tape it off or anything. I'm just kind of being careful and kind of following the ridge. Well, I was being careful, but it's easy enough to clean up your mistakes on this. And as you can see, like that white acrylic, you know, it gave me partial coverage, but it was still kind of blotchy. So I do go back and kind of put a second coat on there just so I have a nice base for my green. I want the top of it to be like the outside of a watermelon. So like dark green with that like light green um, kind of stripe pattern that watermelons have. So this is what I'm gonna start with. This is Christmas green acrylic paint. And I am just gonna use a small brush so I can be a little bit more careful um, staying in the lines here and just go around the top of the pot and paint it green. It's already looking cute, isn't it? I didn't really have a plant to put in this, and so I'm gonna kind of make my own little faux plant too, using some items from the Dollar Tree. So I'll show you how I put all that together too, but this would be really cute with any kind of fresh plants as well. I can't say that I have a green thumb. My mom did, she was great at growing plants, but I'm really good at killing plants. The only plant I think I have um, alive in my house is a cactus that I used for a cactus video last year. And I guess that's the kind of plant for me. <laughs> and so I could, I wasn't sure if you'd be able to see inside paint kind of dripped down. So I did a small band of green inside too, just in case. And then this color is leaf green. I'm going to use a chunky brush from the Dollar Tree and dot, 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 little stripes up each side. And I'm not measuring or anything. I'm just kind of estimating kind of an equal distance between. And look at that cute little watermelon print. I think that is so cute and that was so easy to do. So our little metal watermelon pot is ready. I didn't really have anything great for a filler for this. And I have tons of reindeer moss because I always recycle and reuse this stuff for my projects. So I'm going to put some of that in the bottom of my pot. You could always wad up a newspaper or something and put that in there too. 
But then I'm going to put some foam because I do have some pieces that I'm going to need to kind of put in that to make them stand up. And then I'll just cover the foam with some more reindeer moss um, just to cover up any of the foam. Now, the plant that I'm going to use to try to make a faux plant, I kind of wanted it to look like a house plant. And I picked up this great greenery at Dollar Tree. It's a vine, um, which you wouldn't think that you'd be able to use in a pot like this. But, you know, it actually worked really well. It was really easy. So I'm going to leave it actually intact. That way, if I want to reuse this pot, then I can reuse this vine for something else. But I just kind of stab that down into my foam to get started. And then I'm just going to simply work with the curvature of the pot, just winding it around. And I keep going until I use all of the greenery. As you can see, I'm kind of like spiraling it inside itself to fill up all of the pot, kind of letting it stick out of the pot all on its own. I'm not gluing it down or anything like that. And it gives the appearance of a like house plant, which is what I was going for. I like the different colors in the leaves. I thought that would go great with like that watermelon rind that we did around the top. But I wanted to add a few flowers as well to brighten it up. And I just picked some of these little white wildflowers from Dollar Tree. And I'm just going to cut off like four of these and just kind of randomly put them in there just to give a little bit of a floral touch. They did have a little bit of greenery on them as well, which is fine. I just left that on there. And then what I plan to do is to also do like a little summer pick in there um, using a watermelon from the Dollar Tree. It was kind of hard getting through all of that greenery down to the foam, but I think that works. So I just take a bamboo skewer and then I picked up some of these little summer decor pieces that look like watermelon and we're gonna add that to our pot, which is super easy to do. My skewer was a little bit too long, so I'm just gonna shorten it a bit. Very easy to cut or break. And I kind of want it with like the bite mark up kind of at an angle, the little slice of watermelon. And then I'm just gonna glue that to the back to make a little pick for our arrangement. They also have these like in the round watermelon and um, that would be really cute as well. But we're gonna use the little slice and as soon as that sets up, we can go ahead and just kind of put that down into the floral arrangement. I decided just to do one, so I'm gonna kinda like just stab it right down in the middle, right through the foam. And I think this was the perfect final touch to our little watermelon pot. It is so bright and cute for summer. So here is our first little watermelon DIY today. I guess, yeah, I made everything was from the Dollar Tree except for the vinyl that I used for the seats. Not a big fan of a Dollar Tree vinyl. I do like to craft with it. You'll see later on in the video I do use it, but I try to avoid it with my Cricut at all costs. Not great vinyl for the Cricut. But didn't this turn out really cute? I think it is adorable. Okay, next DIY, I picked up some of these little wood slices at Dollar Tree. You get two in a package, and I thought we could make these into little watermelon coasters. So this craft is gonna be both cute and practical, and I needed some coasters for the summer, so I thought this would be perfect. Now, painting a watermelon is so easy. Let me show you, I just start with red. I think this is fire red or bright red. And I am just going around in a circle. I don't want to fill up the entire coaster because I want to be able to do like the edges of the watermelon too. And it doesn't have to be a perfect circle because a watermelon is not going to be a perfect size, right? And so I do that on both of them. And I just used a small brush so that I can kind of have a little bit of control when I'm going around the edges. I want to leave uh, maybe a half inch of that exposed wood there um, for me to decorate even more. So I'm gonna use that same Christmas green acrylic color that we used before. And I'm gonna go around and paint all that area that we left. I will do some more transition and colors on this, but I want basically the outside of this to look like the outside of a watermelon. So as you can see, I'm not only painting the top, I'm also painting the sides of the little coaster too. 
And you know, I've used these for different DIYs, but I haven't made coasters for them, but they cannot be any more perfect uh, for coasters. They're just the right size and um, shape. So hopefully they will work out well. I have lots of practical DIYs today for these watermelon DIYs, as you'll see, that you can use around your home this summer. So once I got that all green, I'm going to go in like the area in between the red and green. They're kind of looking like Christmas colors right now, aren't they? And I am using this color, which is like that leaf um, green color and a tiny brush and I'm just dot dot dotting that all the way around that border. I just kind of wanted a, a regular tiny line of like maybe a lighter green color in there just to make them a little bit more colorful too. Once I get that dry I go in with some white acrylic and then I'm going to do like an inner edge to that even just to make them have a little bit more color. And I'm just doing the same thing I did with the green. I'm just using a tiny brush from the Dollar Tree and dot, dot, dotting that um, all the way around. So I'm gonna do the same thing here on the other one. Just dot, dot, dotting the white all the way around. And like the little watermelon pot that we did before, I also wanna do like the watermelon stripes on it. So I'm using that leafy green color again and a tiny brush to dot, dot, dot. And I'm doing it like on the top part of the coaster and down the sides because we painted the sides green too, remember? And just doing little watermelon stripes and I want them to look kind of irregular. It's gonna make it look more like a watermelon pattern. And then I'm gonna go back and do the same thing here on the other one. For this one, since it's wood and we're painting it, um, I, um, it's going to be super easy to paint on the little watermelon seeds. And so that's what we're going to do. Um, I started with a black paint pen. I don't know which I would recommend. Um, I really like using black Sharpies for seeds and I do go back with my black Sharpie and touch these up in a minute to kind of make them look a little bit more like seeds. But as you can see, I just kind of did one on the top one on the bottom, one on each side, and then I kind of filled in one in between each one of those just to kind of keep my spacing right. Like that. I just found that my paint pen, it didn't have like a really fine tip on it, so it was kind of hard to get that like point shape um, up a, a little watermelon seed. And so I do go back with my Sharpie here and just kind of shape them up a little bit. Aren't they cute so far? Now I wanna be able to use them for coasters, so we're gonna to have to seal them. So I'm gonna use a little matte Mod Podge from the Dollar Tree, and I'm gonna go over the top of each one of those with a nice thick coat of Mod Podge. Once I got those dry, it dries nice and clear, I'm gonna go over it with another coat because um, you know, the cup's gonna be wet and stuff like that. I don't wanna cause any damage to my adorable little coasters. And these might be the cutest coasters that I've ever made. I love them. Look how cute they are. You could make like four of these and give these as a gift as well. That would be really fun. I love them. What do you guys think about our little coasters? If you see any of these little wood slices at your store, be sure to pick them up because they are great for coasters, but they're also great for other little things as well. They're just such a fun thing to craft with. <laughs> I think they're so whimsical. My son was a big fan. He really liked these. Okay, next DIY, I'm going to do something kind of crazy, but kind of fun. So um, I'm going to use a Dollar Tree wood round, and I'm going to use a paper cut out of a watermelon from Dollar Tree. And I wanted to try to make a watermelon sunset over the ocean. So what I want to do is use the watermelon as the sun, like melting into the ocean and um, just kind of make some wall art with it really outside the box. But I thought it would be really fun to try to do. So that's kind of what I'm thinking. See how the watermelon is going to kind of act as our sun. So we're going to have to make this wood round look, you know, kind of like the ocean. I'm going to do like a really kind of abstract um, ocean scene. 
So what I do is I use, this is Cloudless, a really light blue apple barrel paint that I get at Walmart. And I just paint the top part of the um, sign with that. And then I can go in and paint the bottom part with Caribbean blue. It's a little bit darker color of blue, but very similar. And I want my horizon to be, you know, about like halfway up the um, wood round or so. And I am going to paint it a little bit to make it look like, you know, different shades of blue in the ocean, but still very soft, very abstract. So I used that cloudless color that I used on top and a chunky brush and just kind of distressed my ocean part. And what I want to do is make it look like... Um, the watermelon is melting down into the ocean and you're going to be able to see the reflection of the watermelon in the ocean is what I want to do. And then I think this is turquoise color too. I'm going in and kind of distressing with that too. Kind of all over just to bring in like another shade of blue. And this was that Caribbean blue color. I was trying to make a like, you know, like kind of a darker horizon line right here. Um... I didn't really have a dark enough blue though, so I'm gonna add a dot of brown to my Caribbean blue and try to make a darker shade of blue just because I wanted kind of a little bit of a shadow um, to form my horizon line in my ocean. And I don't know, I don't think it really, you could really see it in the end. And so I end up kind of using something else for that, but that's where I'm at so far with my ocean. <laughs> So here is my sun or my watermelon. And it's just a paper cutout from the summer section at Dollar Tree. So I put a layer of Mod Podge on here and then just kind of sit that down. It's not going to cover the hanger or anything like that. So that's good. And just kind of have it match up with the horizon line that we did for the ocean. Now that I have that on there, I'm going to go kind of... I was trying to get that horizon line a little bit too. Um, I'm using that same cloudless color because I don't think I got it like directly where I wanted it there. Just to kind of touch that up a little bit. And now we can start working on the watermelon reflection. Now this part was kind of experimental and it took me a lot of attempts to try to get it exactly the way I wanted it. But I wanted like red first, right? So I'm using that like fire red color and a chunky brush from Dollar Tree and just distressing a red. And then this color of acrylic is watermelon. And that is gonna be my next color in the reflection. And as you can see, as we're getting farther away from the sun, we're gonna make them um, skinnier. And I decided to mix a little orange with that watermelon to kind of give me a kind of a transition-y color from the red into like some lighter colors. And then I did white, and then I did that leaf green color for the very end, kind of like I would think the reflection would look like in the sunset in the ocean. Now, once I get it on there, I kind of play around with it a little bit. Um, this is that same existing like Caribbean blue color. I go back and distress it slightly, kind of make it look a little bit more subtle. I'm also going to go ahead and distress my watermelon with that same blue color um, just to kind of give it a little bit more character. And then with this, like the, the reflection in the ocean, um, I'm going to kind of work with mine until I'm super happy with it. Wanted a little yellow in it too. Um, so I'm just using a tiny brush and just kind of um, distressing lightly all over. Just kind of that sun vibe that you would have if this were a sunset, but it's going to be a watermelon sunset, right? And I just kind of kept playing with it until I was happy with it. I decided I wanted a little bit more red. So I used that fire red color and I kind of like make it heavier. So I kind of go down like that. Going back and distressing it with like my original blue color until I'm happy with it. I got like it on there at first and I was like, oh my gosh, I don't think this worked. And then I just kind of kept playing with it here, going back and distressing it with some blue if I thought I had it too colorful. And I did it until I was happy with it. Um, I'm glad I stuck with it because my, my family loves it. They think it's so cute. So I'm sealing the whole thing down with just a coat of Mod Podge. It's gonna help seal down that paper watermelon 
kind of give everything like the same kind of matte finish. And this is what I was talking about for the Horizon. I thought it would just go in. I have some of this like cotton twine from Dollar Tree from the little shelves that I use all the time for um, signs. And so I'm just going to cut off some twine for the Horizon. Just because I felt like I needed a little bit more of a physical border back here. And it's going to, you know, this is going to be kind of a coastal watermelon project anyway. And it's going to kind of add to that coastal feel. I do plan to frame it out with Dollar Tree white rope as well because it's a thin sign from the Dollar Tree and they're not like the flattest signs in the world and whenever I frame them out with rope I always think they look better because it's going to make them look chunkier and stuff like that too. Now before I do that though I'm going to go ahead and use that same twine to make a hanger. Um, I'm going to string that in through the back and the best way I've found to do that is put a little hot glue on the end of it. Um, it makes it like firm enough to go through there, um, but sometimes it still kind of gets stuck. I just use some pliers there to pull that one through. And I'm just going to knot that in the front and we have a little hanger for our little watermelon sunset. You guys will have to let me know what you think about the final project. This one was definitely an experiment project, but I'm glad I made it. I think it was really fun. So once I have that twine on there, I'm going to go ahead and frame this out with rope. This is just a spare piece of rope I had. I think this is a thinner one, like the 11 foot white nautical rope from Dollar Tree. And I just want to attach it all the way around. I think it's gonna give it a nice coastal vibe. So I'm gonna start at the bottom and just hot glue this to the edge. Try to keep it as tight as I can. Um, I don't want any gaps. And I want this to kind of, you know, these signs, I don't know. I bought a whole case of these signs from DollarTree.com. And um, I don't know if it's because I'm storing them. I'm storing them indoors, but, you know, I'm in Florida. We have lots of humidity, but they are warped. And I don't remember them being warped when I got them. Um, I don't know. So maybe you shouldn't buy these by the case. <laughs> I was afraid I wouldn't be able to find these in stores. And they are kind of hit or miss. If you saw my community post, you saw that I was just at a, one of our Dollar Trees just turned to a Dollar Tree Plus the other day for the first time. And then one of my viewers was telling me that it's not the only one. More than one is switched. I have to admit I wasn't impressed. Like I didn't buy anything from the Dollar Tree Plus section. I noticed it was just like Five Below. The items were like the same kind of items that Five Below would have. And they were about the same prices. Nothing really craft wise that I could find though. So as you can see, I'm still kind of messing with my like reflection. I did go in and distress it with a little bit more blue. Just to kind of break it up, make it a little bit more subtle. And then I decided that it'd be kind of fun to outline the watermelon sun with that same twine that we used for the hanger and for the horizon. And I thought that would kind of help hide the fact that that was like a piece of cardboard on the sign. And kind of frame that out a little bit. So I just use my a fine tip um, Sherbonder hot glue gun to go around that because it's kind of a thin piece of rope and it's kind of hard to do a thin enough bead with my Ryobi glue gun. And that is it. I think I'm finally happy with my little watermelon sunset. It was definitely kind of an experiment. It took me out of my comfort zone a little bit, but I think it's really fun. I think it's a fun idea. And something cute and whimsical you can make for your home for summer. Little watermelon sunset. And even at all the distressing and everything I did, I do like how it turned out with those colors fading from red to green. And I'm glad I did add a little bit of yellow to that as well. I like, I like the different colors. Okay, the next watermelon DIY, I picked up these red placemats at Dollar Tree the other day. They're in with their summer section. And I thought these would be perfect to make into watermelon placemats for my table for summer. So I'm gonna start by doing white around the edges. My plan here is to do three rows of white. Now, as you can see, it's like a spiral that comes from the center all the way to the outside. So you're not going to get like three rows, like evenly all the way across. There will be a transition period where 
you kind of have to go in between the lines a little bit, but you can figure it out. It's not too hard. Now I used a foam brush. I felt like it didn't get down into the fibers as much as I would want. So I did go back with a second coat of ivory with a brush so I could kind of like get it down in there a little bit more. And I think that helped. Now we're gonna do the different um, shades of green for the um, outside of the watermelon. And so I'm gonna start with leaf green and I want like the second layer, second row. <laughs> to be this light green color. And so I just use a small brush and I go around. I went ahead and painted it all um, white so that I would have a nice background. So I wouldn't have to paint directly onto the red mat. And I'm just gonna go all the way around with this. Now you could skip this color of green if you wanted and you could just do one row of white and then one row of dark green. I wanted mine to be a little bit more colorful so I'm gonna do one white, one leaf green, and one Christmas green. And I think these colors are perfect for watermelon. So the outer row of our little placemat, I'm just gonna go in and paint it that Christmas green color. You don't have to tape off or anything like that. You can kind of feel the different layers and it's not supposed to look perfect. Like a watermelon doesn't look perfect anyway. So you can kind of have fun with this. And I think these are gonna look so cute on my table um, for summertime. I have like, you know, um, I have a bee theme in there, but I did take down, you know, my bee coffee bar because we switched it over to lemon. So I thought it'd be kind of fun to do some fruit in my dining area in my kitchen. I'm going back with that Christmas green color and kind of making that outer green circle a little bit wider and the light green a little bit smaller. Now it's time for seeds. I want this to be durable, so I am gonna use my paint pen. You could use vinyl for this as well, but I didn't know how well that would stick to this kind of material. So I am just trying to <laughs> carefully figure out where my seeds would be, because again, it isn't a spiral pattern, so you can't, I mean, I guess you could if you wanted a spiral pattern of seeds, but I kind of want an even pattern. So I'm just going around the outside of my red part of my watermelon and just drawing little seeds on with my black paint pen. I'm just kind of estimating the distance between the seeds. And we have one row. I really wanted my watermelon seeds to only be on the outer parts of it. And so I'm gonna do one more row. And this row, as you can see, I'm just alternating the seeds in between the row behind it. We have two rows of watermelon seeds, and that is all there is to it. Isn't that so cute? I think these placemats would be so cute for your home for summer, or if you're having a summer party or something like that. Um, and I'm gonna show you, even they'd be really cute with a red plate. I have white plates, but they would still be super cute with a place setting because you can use the cute little watermelon napkins that they have as doll at Dollar Tree as well. So I'm not gonna only show you the placemat, I'm gonna kind of show you what it looks like. This is how it looks with like one of my plates and one of those cute little watermelon napkins that I was talking about. So cute for summer. What do you guys think about this little placemat DIY idea? I love it and I kind of like the round. I usually don't do the round placemats, but I think it actually turned out pretty cute. Doesn't that look so summery? Okay, the next DIY, I found this great little galvanized metal tray on clearance at Target Dollar Spot for $2.50. They had all of this great stuff for half off. And so I thought I wanted to DIY it, but I wanted something not permanent. I wanted something for summer that I could DIY this tray, but something that I can just take apart because that tray is like really cool. I don't want to damage it with paint or anything like that. Now I found that this little round um, wood round sign from the Dollar Tree would fit perfectly in there. So I thought we could do a little tray inset into the tray that we could decorate. That way I would not damage my tray at all. So I am just taking the staples off the back of this sign because I removed the little wood beads to kind of give me a smooth surface. This sign does kind of have a frame on it and stuff like that, but I don't really need that. But look, it's a perfect fit. It fits like a glove, right? So we can just decorate that. 
Now I want it to be usable so I can use this tray for drinks or whatever. And so I thought red vinyl would be perfect. This is Dollar Tree vinyl. I told you I use it for everything except for my Cricut. And so I just peel and stick this bright red vinyl right on the back of that sign. Just gonna use the back so I'll have a nice flat surface and kind of smooth that out all around. Now it's so easy to cut through this. Um, I'm just using a sanding block and these new sanding blocks from Dollar Tree with the handles are really cool. I just found these the other day at one of my Dollar Trees. And I just sand all the way around and it cuts right through that vinyl, gives me a perfect cut, and this is gonna look like, you know, the inside of our watermelon. And I think the vinyl will be fine. I can put drinks or whatever on there, and I don't think it's gonna damage it at all. Now, remember, I cut out these little black watermelon seeds earlier on my Cricut. So I'm just gonna kind of do a seed pattern on here, just kind of by peeling and sticking. I kind of started doing like opposite sides just for spacing, kind of like a clock, right? And then fill it in. I guess it's exactly like a clock because it looks like I'm doing like 12 all the way around for my outer row of seeds. Now I did want to do two rows. So the next row, I'm just going to kind of alternate about halfway in between and just kind of peel and stick those. The great thing is, is if you're not happy with where you put them, you can just kind of pick them up and um, rearrange them. But I kind of only want to do two rows of seeds on this one as well, kind of like we did with the watermelon placemats. And the middle part of the watermelon will just leave plain. Now for the outer edge of the watermelon, I thought this green like burlap ribbon from the Dollar Tree would be perfect. I could just wrap that around, again, not causing any damage to this great little galvanized metal sign. I didn't want anything permanent. I just wanted something cute for summer. And you know what? If you picked up a couple of these, you know, you could always make this into a tear tray as well. My last watermelon video that I just did, I showed you how to make a watermelon tear tray with supplies from the Dollar Tree, and that was super fun. So I just do a little bead of hot glue. That's basically the only thing I'm going to do to this. So it'll be easy to pull off when I'm done with this tray for summer. And I just wrap my green ribbon all the way around, hot gluing it to itself. I'm not gonna decorate like the inside of the tray um, around the edges because that little watermelon fits in there perfectly. I thought that would get in the way. So we're just gonna decorate the outside of it there with the green. If you wanted to, you could always paint stripes on that ribbon as well. And then I'm just gonna put the middle part of our watermelon down inside our tray. And look how cute. So easy. That tray was only $2.50 and everything is temporary so that um, nothing permanent, but it looks like a little watermelon. So I think it's so cute and practical. What do you guys think about this one? Another little fun idea. You could use this for a display. I'm actually gonna use mine as a tray. And so I'm just gonna kind of show it to you here flat like I would use it for a tray, but this would be cute kind of like standing up on its side too. For a fun little summer decoration. I love decorating with fruit for summer. I've done lemons and pineapples and watermelons and strawberries. <laughs> Hey guys, I wanted to take a quick moment out of today's video and let you know that I have a private Facebook group link below. We would love to see you over there. You can see what everybody has been working on. I have so many creative people that watch my channel and you'll find out when I post new videos. I also have Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Pinterest and my handle is Crafty Beach on YouTube. Okay, I promised you guys some smaller like watermelon DIYs for a tear tray too. So let's get started with those. This is just a little wood crate from the Dollar Tree. I am going to stain mine all over with some antique wax by Waverly to make a little crate. I want to make a little watermelon crate for my tear tray. And the tear tray that I'm decorating here today on this video is for my kitchen. And I also kind of wanted something to put my napkins in and I wanted to display those great watermelon napkins from the Dollar Tree. And I think that this little crate will be just the right size. I do want it to look like a finished project though. So I'm not just doing the outside of it. I'm also doing the inside of it. 
just to kind of give this a stain all over. I even do like the bottom inside the handles and then just follow that up with a paper towel. Kind of messy, <laughs> but it looks really good in the end. Now, once I have that stained, I can decorate that. I found um, a really great little watermelon that was actually from Dollar General, and I thought we could add that to the front of it. It was only a dollar. You know, that Dollar General stuff can be cheaper than Dollar Tree. And it had a little tassel and wood beads on there, which I don't really need. So I'm just going to pop those off and attach this little watermelon to that little fin that we just made. And I'm just gonna do that with some wood glue, wood to wood, and a little hot glue, just to keep it on there right now. Try not to mix them together. And it's the perfect size for this crate, and it gives a little watermelon decoration to this little napkin holder um, that's also gonna have the watermelon napkins inside. So I think that's gonna be so cute. I love these. I try to pick them up every year for summer. They also have other fruit too, like, you know, like the lemons. I think there's like an orange one and they fit in there perfectly. So that is our first little tear tray DIY. Now this was actually a watermelon squeaky dog toy <laughs> that I got on clearance at Target. I'm always looking for items that I can use for decor and um, I'm not afraid to use a dog toy on my tear tray. I think it's gonna work. Now for the next DIY, I'm gonna take a green and a red long candle from Dollar Tree, and I'm gonna take these to my oven, put them in a pot of boiling water until they melt, and we're gonna make a really cute little watermelon candle with these. So off they go. This is the little candle holder that we're gonna use. It is also from Dollar Tree. This one has like the little cute little rope handle on it and the little metal ring around the top. And I'm only gonna use one of those wicks for my candles that are now melted. So I just pulled the wick out of one of those candles from the Dollar Tree. And I just kind of attached the little metal part to the bottom. I do use a little hot glue just to help keep it in place. And then we can start building this. I wanted green first for like the outside of the watermelon. So I'm only gonna use part of the green candle. Just pour in a little green layer and I let that one set up. While I'm letting that one set up, I then come back with the red one and I poured that one in there, but I forgot to hit record. So it is now full. The green was partially set up and then I poured the red on top. I'm just making sure that my wick stands straight up. You might wanna attach it to a pencil or something um, to make that stand up. But I think I hurried my green part along a little bit by like putting it like in the refrigerator or something like that to make it harden up a little bit. But I did the same thing here with the red part now and it's all set up. So we have the red, this is the most of the candle, right? With the green candle on the bottom. And this is probably one of my favorite candles that I've ever made. It turned out really good. But my watermelon needs seeds, right? So I'm gonna use a black paint pen I'm just gonna do some little random watermelon seeds all over. This is gonna be the perfect size candle for a tear tray, but it's also gonna be great for my kitchen. And even if you didn't have a tear tray, this would be a great little summer candle to have around your home. Just kind of touching up my seeds there, making sure they look like seeds. And I love how that turned out. <laughs> so fun and whimsical for summer. Okay, the next DIY, I picked up one of these little watermelon plastic cups, straw cups from the Dollar Tree, and I thought we could make this into a little watermelon planter for my tear tray, but I don't want it to look like such cheap plastic, right? So the first thing I do to it is I go over it with a coat of matte Mod Podge to try to take away that plastic feel. And I do that a lot when I use plastic products like this from the Dollar Tree, especially like on a tear tray, just to give it I don't take away all that shininess, right? And I just wanted to do a little watermelon like floral arrangement on here. So once I get that dry, I do want to further distress it just a little bit. So I do go in here with um, a little ivory paint and I'm gonna, a chunky brush, and I'm gonna distress it some more just to kind of give it like a little bit more of a coastal farmhouse vibe. 
Now be careful if you have to wipe off your distressing though because you want to make sure that you don't take off your Mod Podge, but you know, the distressing step is totally optional. I just prefer that look. Now for the top where it had like the little screw on cap, I need to disguise that somehow. So I thought a little green and white gingham ribbon from the Dollar Tree would be really cute. And I'm just going to hot glue that right around the top that had the little screw part on it to disguise that. And we have a little watermelon vase or planter to do a little floral arrangement. I always like adding like a floral arrangement to a tear tray if I can. I picked up this foliage from Dollar Tree because it reminded me of a watermelon. It's got that red and green um, colors in there. Just a matter of arranging it in there. Now you don't have a very big opening there, but I'm just going to take some Dollar Tree foam and just kind of cut it up and make it fit. <laughs> I just kind of need something um, to be able to press my leaves down into. So we're just going to do it like the little chunk way. Kind of messy, but it works. And then I can just kind of cut these little um, leaves off and put them down in the floral foam. And we have a really easy little watermelon plant for our tear tray. It'd be really cute too if you have like a little like terracotta pot or something like that too. You could DIY it like we did that first pot. Be really cute as well. Okay, for the next DIY, I'm gonna take some um, foam board from the Dollar Tree and I only need a piece of it. So I cut down a square. And then I'm going to use two of these little silicone brush cleaners from a Dollar Tree. They have watermelon stuff in like every aisle. I picked up two of those. And basically, I'm just going to use the foam board just to cut out a circle because I want to make a like a watermelon for a tear tray with these. And it's kind of hard to cut down a perfect circle, especially out of foam board. But as long as it's a little bit smaller, I don't think it's going to be visible. I just kind of needed something to um, attach my watermelon to. And I'm just gonna put those two pieces together like that to form a whole little watermelon. I like DIYing with these. They have them like in pineapple, watermelon, all different kinds of things. I just add some hot glue to the little suction cups on the back. Might as well work with what's already on there. And just hot glue that to my foam board, creating a cute little watermelon for my tear tray. I didn't really want you to be able to see like the foam board and stuff on the sides, you know, since it's going to be on a tear tray and you might be able to see the sides a little bit. I decided to kind of frame mine out with some Dollar Tree rope. I thought that would be look really cute on there. So just using hot glue, I'm just going to glue some of the thinner brown Dollar Tree rope all around the edges of our little watermelon. And I think this helped to finish this project off. So once I get it all glued on there, I do want to kind of like burn the fuzzies off a little bit with a lighter to kind of clean it up. I also wanted to make sure that my like sides were all glued down. So I did do a little bead of hot glue, kind of sealing that down, kind of making it look like it's all one piece and not lots of different layers. Now I do want mine to stand up. Um, you could always use like a little plate stand. I'm just going to glue a wood block to the back of mine. Easy peasy, this is just a little Jenga block from Five Below. And we have a cute little watermelon for our tear tray. The next um, item is just a little watermelon off one of these little summer signs from Dollar Tree. I just wanted a little wedge of watermelon that I can make into a little tiny sign for my tear tray. And it does have glitter on it, which I wasn't really going for. So just using matte Mod Podge all over that to kind of tone that down a little bit. And then I thought I would use some little mini Jenga blocks from Dollar Tree to make a little stand for this. Basically, I just wanted to make this stand up. And so I'm going to use several of them to kind of make it tall enough, heavy enough. And I just glue those together make a little space here that we can glue to the back. It's going to make that nice and strong enough to stand up, even though it's kind of a thinner watermelon. Gives it a little bit of substance. So super easy little watermelon for a tear tray and so cute. Now this is a cup that I got at Dollar Tree. It's got little watermelons all over it. And I thought that'd be perfect to display some like red and white straws for my tear tray. Cause again, this one's going in my kitchen. 
Now, I was all over Dollar Tree and I found all kinds of watermelons. So this is lip gloss. So cute, right? And then I also found this is a pencil sharpener. When I tell you I go down every aisle of Dollar Tree looking for stuff that I can craft with, especially miniature things for tear trays, like I really do. Now, as you can see, I have a little wood box there. My original plan was just kind of fill it up with watermelons, have a little crate of watermelons. Um, I wasn't a big fan of it though, so I do kind of find other ways to use it, but I did pick up two of the little lip glosses, which are my favorite. And look, I even found key covers. They have so many watermelon things. Um, if you look around, you're going to be surprised how many things you can find. And as you can see, I even found little tiny watermelon erasers. Now these little key covers have little keychains on them as well, but I don't really need them. But I was trying to find just like lots of little watermelons to fill this up. And like I said, I ended up not liking it, but I'm going to find other uses for them. So this is just um, a little tile sign from Dollar Tree, and I thought we'd make a really cute little watermelon sign for my tear tray. I always love doing a cute little sign, and it has like a, um, it's kind of a glossy wood frame on this, which is not like ideal to paint, but I really wanted mine to be green. And so we're going to make it happen. <laughs> It might take a few coats, but you know, sometimes those like smooth, I don't know, it's kind of like a laminate material on it. It makes it kind of hard to paint, but um, this is just chalk paint. So that might help it stick a little bit better. But we're just gonna do enough coat just to make it a solid green color. Now for the tile, um, I can just use the back of it, right? Um, but then I don't really want that tile design to be on the back. So just to finish it off, I'm going to use some cheap um, contact paper from Dollar Tree and just cut down a little square to cover that up just so I'll have a finished back. And then I went to my Cricut and I cut out the word sweet with uh, the skinny font, which looks like a Ray Dunn font. I'm going to use my paper, transfer paper, and transfer this to my sign and I thought we would use one of those little watermelons for the front of it as well. I couldn't decide which one I wanted to use. I thought the pencil eraser one was too big but you know the lip gloss one was just about perfect. And I am going to go in and distress with a little bit of ivory all over just to kind of because I always do it goes with like my coastal farmhouse vibe in my house. And um just kind of make the frame look just the way I want it. You could also do like watermelon stripes on there. That would be really cute too. I'm going to use a little hot glue on the corners of that frame to secure my tile right back in there. And such a great way to make a little sign for a tear tray. Nice and heavy duty. It's going to stand up nicely. And I'm just going to attach one of my little lip glosses by hot gluing that to it right underneath the word sweet. So cute. Okay, so I needed to find other uses for these watermelons. Um, I thought like I could use like a little Jenga block with the pencil holder just to make this stand up. I'll have like a little miniature watermelon for my tear tray, which would be super cute. It's a nice pink color, so it's a little bit of variety with the watermelon. And then I can just sit the other one on there as well. Now this is like a little, I guess, makeup pouch that I got at the Dollar Tree too, shaped like a little watermelon. And I'm just stuffing mine with like some polyfill from an old pillow to kind of make like a little watermelon pillow for my cheer tray. I always like having like a little mini pillow or something like that on there. I always think it's fun. It almost kind of looks like a stuffed animal when you kind of stuff it with some plush. And I thought that'd be really cute on there as well. I decided maybe let's use all of it, make a nice little watermelon for our tear tray. Okay, the next watermelon DIY is this cute little gnome from the Dollar Tree. They have these every year at Dollar Tree. This one was blue, but it doesn't matter because I just paint it all over with red. And since it's red, you know, you're going to have to do several coats. I'm doing crimson chalk paint and I still had to do several coats. And as you can see, I'm basically, I just painted all of the little blue gnome hat except for like the outer like row there because I want to make that part like the outside or the rind of the watermelon. 
by painting that green. So I use a combination of green paint pens. Um, you guys always ask where I got these paint pens. I got them on Amazon and I do have them linked in my Amazon shop below. Lots of great color choices. And I thought that looked really cute. The only thing that he needs now are watermelon seeds. So I use a black paint pen and just draw little seeds all over his little gnome hat. So don't be afraid to pick up these little gnomes at the Dollar Tree like that, even if they're not the color you want, because you can just totally make them your own thing. Now, remember I found the little watermelon erasers? So I thought that would be the perfect size for a little gnome. We can make it look like he is holding a little watermelon. He doesn't really have an arm, <laughs> but we can kind of make it look like he does, right? Just by hot gluing that right there to the front. He was so easy to put together. All he required is a little bit of paint and a little watermelon, and I think he turned out so cute. Now, this is just a little green ball. It's actually a light-up ball that I got at Dollar Tree. You could use any kind of green ball that you can find. It actually doesn't even have to be green because I'm painting it. I cut, did cover up the little face part on it with some ivory because I thought that was going to show through. And I'm using this green color of chalk paint all over. I want to make this look like a little watermelon. You could also do this with eggs. You know, Dollar Tree has those little um, farm fresh eggs in their home decor section sometimes too. And then I go back in with like a lighter green color to do my like little watermelon, kind of like soft stripes all over. to Kind of make this look like a real little watermelon. And it's such an easy DIY. You could do this with any kind of ball. Now, you guys know I love like a wood bead a garland for my tear tray. So I'm going to use some raw wood beads that I got on Amazon and I'm just going to paint them different watermelon colors. So this is a lighter green color. So I did four wood beads in that color and this is my darker green color. And I am just doing four beads with that as well. Kind of also distressing it with the lighter green to make them look like little watermelons. And then we're going to do red ones. This is Crimson Chalk Paint by Waverly. And we're going to do three red ones. And they're going to get little seeds all over them with black paint pen for a fun little whimsical watermelon would be garland. Give it one more distress and we can start putting this together. Now to string this, sometimes I use um, hot glue. This time I'm using like a giant needle and I'm just gonna do a fun little pattern. I'm also mixing in just some raw wood beads as well, repeating that pattern all the way to the end till I get a long enough wood bead garland. I just happen to have a tassel. You could totally make your own, but I always try to save these and I saved this off of that project from earlier that didn't need it. And I'm just going to shorten it because this is kind of a small wood bead garland. And then the other end, I wanted to attach a watermelon. And I thought these little key covers, remember those from before, would be perfect. I'm just going to kind of glue them back to back. So it'll be like a little rubber watermelon on each side. They're just the right size for a little wood bead garland like this. And I'm just going to tie that on. I used to have to kind of DIY all of my wood bead garlands, but you know, Dollar Tree now has a lot of like colored beads as well, but it's always fun to do a custom pattern like this with the little watermelons on there and the little red parts with the watermelon seeds. Okay, it's time to put this together. We're gonna put our little silicone brush cleaner here in the back. Our little watermelon turned out so cute. And here is our little napkin holder with the little Hello Summer watermelon on the front that I got at Dollar General. And they'll be accessible as well. Here is the little watermelon sign that we just kind of made into a little standing sign. Our little ball, light up ball from the Dollar Tree that we painted to kind of make it look like a little watermelon. Makes great decor. I'm just gonna sit the lip gloss straight on there because it looks like a great little miniature watermelon. Here is our little watermelon gnome. He's so cute. And our little slice of watermelon. That was the dog toy that I got on clearance at Target. And I like that it's kind of pink. Kind of mixing up the pinks and the reds there with my tear tray. And this is just a two tear tray that I had in my kitchen. Here is our little watermelon floral arrangement. It's nice and tall. 
So we're just going to put that one here in the back. I love those leaves on that plant. I think they remind me so much of a watermelon. And then also I have the straw holder, the watermelon straw holder is nice and tall, but I also want to be able to get to it. Here is the little like makeup bag, watermelon that we stuffed, kind of made it like a little pillow. We're just going to kind of lean that up here in the back. They kind of fill up the space back there. I like to use all of my territory if I can. Here's our little sweet sign we made out of the tile sign and the lip gloss from Dollar Tree. And the little a watermelon pencil holder that we made into a little miniature there. And my favorite, I think, is that candle. How cute did that candle turn out? Adorable. And then here is our little custom watermelon wood bead garland. So adorable that we used the little key cover watermelons there on the end. And this is how my little watermelon tear tray turned out. If you haven't caught my last video it was a watermelon DIY video as well. You'll have to go check that out. I had so many watermelon DIYs that I couldn't fit it all in one video. So I thought I would make two. Hey guys, I wanted to also tell you that I've introduced memberships on my channel. For $4.99 a month, you can help support me here at Crafty Beach. You're going to get early ad-free access to my videos and a few other perks as well, like shout outs. So I want to give a big thank you and shout out to the following Crafty Beach Fund members. Thank you to Karen O'Haran, Coastal Couple, Pamela Bergeron, I Am Mojo Jojo, Mary Banks, Melinda Elizabeth, Jamie Job, Susan Edmonds, Stacy Hall, Sandra Ray, Carrie R., and Tracy Knight. I appreciate you guys so much. Thank you for supporting me. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the like button, comment your favorite DIY in the comment section below, and don't forget to subscribe. We're almost to 20,000 subscribers. Enjoy the final reveal.
so much for watching. If you'd like to watch more Crafty Beach, YouTube thinks you might enjoy this video right here.